This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. I read this interesting article which says that Goldman Sachs predicts 300 million jobs will be lost or degraded by artificial intelligence. This is quite an alarming number. But then I decided to have a look at the report. Okay. So when I click on this particular uh, report, it gives me this particular report. Okay. Uh, so I downloaded it from here and uh, you know, I was reading through this report. What they say is that if generative AI delivers on its promised capabilities, the labor market could face significant disruption. Using data on occupational tasks in the both US and Europe, we find that roughly two thirds of current jobs are exposed to some degree of AI automation and that generative AI could substitute up to one fourth of current work. Extrapolating these estimates globally, it suggests that generative AI could expose the equivalent of 300 million full-time jobs to automation. Okay. And then they say that the good news is that worker displacement from automation has historically been offset by creation of new jobs and emergence of new occupations following technological innovations, which accounts for vast majority of long run employment growth. Okay. The combination of significant labor cost savings, new job creation and higher productivity for non displaced workers raises the possibility of a productivity boom that raises economic growth substantially. Although the timing of such a boom is hard to predict. There is a negative as well as positive thing over here. Okay. Now let us look into some further details of what uh, they are talking about generative AI technologies, right? So generative AI technologies, they are saying like chat, GPT, DALI, Lambda. Okay. So the three main char uh, characteristics they are saying is that the current uh, generative AI technologies are very generalized. Okay. Rather than specialized use cases. And they can generate novel human like output rather than merely describe or interpret existing information. And they have approachable interface that both understand and respond with natural language, images, audio and video. Okay. Uh, because of the first two advances, generalized use case, uh, generalized uh, than specialized use cases and to generate normal human like output, uh, they are saying uh, uh, it is, you know, the third is also very key for its adoption timeline. They can expand to a lot of tasks that AI can perform. The first two things are important for that. The third one is key for determining its adoption timeline. Say for example, chat GPT surpassed 1 million users in just five days. Okay. The fastest that any company has reached it, this particular benchmark. Okay. Um, that's because of a very nice user interface. You know, the ability to generate a uh, human like output was very good. Okay. So just like how windows and uh, development of off, uh, like ms office brought the power personal computer to the masses these interfaces of the current generation ai intuitive interfaces could significantly increase the speed of adoption okay uh, this is a general overview of generative ai i would not go into this um, this talks about um, how is the data have been previously collected how is data now collected for generative ai uh, what happens in the neural network, right, to AI output. And then previously what they were, or previous ML methods, what was it used for, right? Uh, what was the output to human interface, right? Uh, how does the new uh, generative AI UIs look like, right? And then applications. So the applications previously were very focused, like text classification, facial image recognition, statistical prediction and in inference. Generative AI is more about answering complex textual questions with human like language and structure, create original images, graphics, videos based on UI queries, explain and generate code, right? If you look at the previous outputs, it was like very specific code or syntax to make narrow requests based on the models intended function here, because you have these large language models, you can ask in text, right? Uh, so you can have a wide variety of requests and more accessible interface for human AI interaction. Here they talk about generative neural network. Here they talk about data, which has been trained on large databases, almost the entire internet. Okay. Previously on smaller data sets for specific tasks. 
okay then they talk about uh, you know uh, ai is increasingly outperforming human benchmarks on a lot of benchmark data sets it is increasingly per, uh, outperforming human performance okay and over the years this has become much more the difference has become much more larger when compared to human performance on these benchmarks and then they say that uh, you know management teams are increasingly focused on opportunities from ai on company earning calls and more mentions of ai rates higher capex okay that is what they are talking about so the more the company talks about ai it is predicting more higher capex for those companies and what they say is that we find that roughly two thirds of U.S. Uh, occupations are exposed to some degree of automation, and those occupations which are exposed have a significant but partial share of their workload that can be replaced. So, for those occupations which are exposed to automation, 25 to 50 percent of their workload can be replaced by AI. Okay. So we estimate that one fourth of current work tasks could be automated by AI with particularly high exposures in administrative legal professions and low exposures in physically intensive professions such as construction and maintenance. That is what they are saying. So here they have, have, they have that share of industry employment exposed to automation by AI in US. So if you look at all industries over here, say 25% is what they say is typical automation this thing. But office and administrative support, legal, some architecture, engineering, management, right, business, financial operations, uh, life, physical and social sciences, right, these industries, computers and mathematical, so sales related, these industries already have a high level of automation. Okay. Similarly, in the Europe area, again, you know, clerical uh, support workers, professionals, technicians and associate professional managers. So some of these areas are already automated. Automation exposure is already very high over here in these industries. Okay. So globally, what they say is 18% of work could be automated with AI with larger effects in developing markets than emerging markets. Okay. That is what they are claiming over here. Right. And then uh, our estimates confirm that a significant share of employment is least partially is at least partially exposed to automation by AI, but larger effects frequently cited include automation of physical tasks that seem less likely in the near term. So physical task automation may not happen that much, but in other areas it could happen. That's what they are saying over here. So this is the thing, replacement in legal and administrative fields, little effect in manual and outdoor jobs and productivity enhancement everywhere else. So what they are saying is that the legal and administrative side of things, okay. So like education, um, computers and mathematical programming, all those things, there is a good chance that AI will replace a lot of jobs over here, nearly 50% likely replacement, okay, in some of these areas right and in some of the areas ai will complement okay whereas some industries like building um, you know construction uh, manual and outdoor jobs it is still going to be difficult for ai to replace jobs so that is what they are trying to say so maybe in the future uh, these jobs will be valued more if you look at currently also manual labor is uh, you know valued more in um, developed countries in the emerging markets, because you have lot of labor, manual labor is still cheap. But in developing markets, manual labor is very expensive. So maybe in the future, we all become uh, plumbers or something like that, right? But in the other fields also, AI is going to complement in some of the fields. If for example, in say healthcare or something, I expect AI to be complementary, not kind of, you know, uh, replace or this thing, right? It may not be a replacement. It might be complementary in some, uh, specific domains like healthcare and other you know uh, regulated domains right yeah so that's what they're saying ai can complement rather than replace in some of the, these things but ai definitely is going to have an impact in the future jobs right uh, only time will tell it is difficult to predict when this shift will happen but the shift is going to happen that is what is being claimed in this report and probably everybody should have some kind of a education in the future you know to be uh, uh, what do you call kind of find jobs in ai right uh, people should have ai education in the future right 
but some jobs are still going to be very safe with regards to manual labor so only the future will tell how uh, you know this situation will pan out okay so this is an interesting report you can also check out this report uh, i'll be putting the link of this uh, forbes article as well as this report you can check it out so yeah so this was a short video on this particular report which talks about you know 300 million jobs which could be replaced or could be affected or degraded by ai right uh, in the sense could go to automation in future yeah if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video